Welcome to the Shikama Live Show with your host, Shikama. So I've been hanging out with my aunt. This is the aunt that's going to give me the uh, house. Well, she gets me to... She's delivering me a house that's been completely and utterly vandalized. So then I have to take out the loan. I have to hire the contractors and everything, right? So she gets to offload a house that literally has nothing going for it, right? And and to get it up to livable conditions would take a lot of money. My aunt is cheap. She's not paying anything. You understand this? I'm paying everything. She's trying to say and dictate everything. I bring my contractors that I procured and she's trying to tell them what she wants. Hold on. That's not all. That's not all. She wants to take me shopping. So she took me shopping for suits. Where does she go? She goes to the thrift store. Okay, we'll we'll go to the thrift store. I did not know we were going to the thrift store. My aunt is rich. She's cheap as the day is long. Cheap, 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 right? So this is her mode. She's in cheap mode. Everything's cheap mode with the house. She's in cheap mode. Let me tell you something, black people. And here's the attitude that you need. You need to have my attitude. If my dollars are coming out of my pocket, no goddamn body in the entire world better say anything to me. Do you understand me? I don't care if she's your mom. I don't care if she gave birth to you. I don't care if she's your dad or he's your dad. Nobody in the entire world better say anything to you. Now, apply that broadly. Hey, you need to buy this because this is what all the cool kids are. No, no, no. That is not how it works. And this is the problem a lot of black people have. I've been spending a lot of time with my aunt lately. And invariably, we'll talk about something. She has that whole beat down black person attitude. I cannot stand it. I cannot tolerate, I can't stand to even be around that stuff. Here's a woman who, with her husband, owns half of North Las Vegas. There is not a neighborhood that you can go in that she doesn't own or they don't own a good five houses. Ridiculous. And she has this attitude of, poor me, poor me, everything's poor, everything's poor, oh, poor, oh, poor. She's not even close to being poor. She's no, no, not even in the in the universe of being poor. And their house is, I don't know, I don't know, some, I don't know like thirty thousand square feet or something, something ridiculous. Their their power bill is more than people actually spend on their car. No, I mean like purchasing a car. <laughs> I, I had no idea. I asked my uncle once, how much do, how much does, is your, because I was complaining about our power bill. And then he told me, I was like, oh, wow, oh, wow. You can actually get lost in their house. Like to find each other, you have to walk through the house and screaming each other's name. And she takes me to a thrift store and then proceeds to try and tell me what to buy. Now, my aunt is 60 something years old. She has the taste of a 60 something year old woman. She's, this is, this, this is real. This looks nice. I said, would you please? I wanted to tell her to just shut up. And she called me fat the entire time. This this is what's really crazy. This woman called me fat. I have a 34 inch waist. Her son has a 9,000 inch waist. Her husband has a 40,000 inch waist. <laughs> and she's trying to tell me, first of all, she's not spending a dime. You have to have this attitude. Now, I know that she's saying, doing all of this stuff Because probably I allow it and probably she never gets to say anything to anybody. She's hands off on her son and her daughter because they're both married and she respects marriage and she respects that the other person in the marriage has more say than she does, right? I'm not married. So she probably still thinks I'm 12 years old. Now, why is she calling me fat? For for all you who all are confused about that, she's comparing me now to when I had a 24 inch waist, which was only a few years ago. I was thin all my life, and I hated every second of it. And I told her that she said, "You used to be so thin." I said, "And I hated every second of it." You hated being thin? Yes, I hated being. I wasn't. St- thin. I was bone skinny. You could see my bones from my jaw to my feet. You saw nothing but bones. They stuck out (laughs) in odd places.
<laughs> and it's only now, which is funny, that all the men in the family are now congratulating me. Oh, finally, you you can fill out a shirt. Finally, you don't look like you're, uh, you know, some emaciated uh, Ethiopian, you know, or something like that. But the, the point of this video is, if you are reaching into your pocket, this goes for everybody, but black people have it bad. Bad, 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 bad. Oh my God, you have it bad. You have it terrible. You let anybody tell you what you need to spend your money on. If you're reaching into your pocket, everybody else needs to shut the hell up. Even if you are the one who gave the money to your son or daughter as a, whatchamacallit, as a whatever, you can only advise them, but you need to shut up. And you need to teach them that lesson. If they are reaching into their pocket, nobody else better say a word. Well, you should do this. No, I shouldn't do this when you are not the one. Sp and you know what? And if you spend mo your money on something that I don't like, I'll throw it away. So you best believe <laughs> if I have something to do with it, I'm going to have an opinion on it. If you're giving me something, I'm going to have an opinion on it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't spare feelings. Uh, what, your grandmother, my grandmother bought me this ugly sweater. It's an ugly sweater. I am, b no, I'm taking, taking it to the Salvation Army right now. It's going to Red Cross right now. It's going down to the mission right now. It's ugly. It's hideous. My grandmother is 9,000 years old. What does she know about catching a wife? First of all, what does my nearly 70 year old aunt know about catching a woman? Hmm? And if I'm reaching into my pocket, nobody had better say a word. That's the attitude everybody has. This is the, the predicament that we find ourselves in. Of this Occupy Wall Street and blogging on their iPhones while they're doing Occupy Wall Street. You, you are some silly, silly, stupid people. Oh, we're going to get back at the bankers while you're blogging all of this stuff on your iPhone. You're just retarded as hell. Just dumb as the day is long. If I reach into my pocket, nobody better say a word. Nothing, nothing. And if you want to take me shopping and you're not spending the money, you better just take me to the store that you suggest and you need to sit on the bench just like the, the husbands sit on the bench and I'll go into the store and I'll come out probably with nothing because I have actual taste and my taste is not cheap. I'm not going to buy something that somebody else hated so much that they got rid of. And I'm talking about thrift store. And I'm not going to go into some store and pay overpriced for man-made material. Man-made material, stuff that literally costs pennies. That's why they even came up with the man-made material. Because it costs pennies to make. Because they can make giant vats of this stuff, turn it into some sort of solid material, turn it into some cloth, and then sell it to idiots. And the stuff is not breathable. And if you walk in the sun too long, it shrinks. <laughs> you look like the fat guy in uh, Laurel and Hardy. I don't know which one was the fat guy. Because the stuff has shrinked all up on you. Because you bought man-made materials that cost absolutely nothing. And you're paying $50 for a shirt. $100 for a shirt. $400 for a shirt. But anyway, have that attitude. If you are reaching into your pocket, the entire world needs to shut up. It, you, they can't influence you. Here's my attitude. They can't influence me at whatsoever. If I'm reaching into my pocket, uh, why don't we just put get the cheapest front door that we could possibly? No, absolutely not. I want the best front door, the most secure one. In fact, I want a smart door and I want to put up all brick around the house. We don't need to worry about insulation. Yes, we do need to worry. If I'm paying my money, I need to worry about insulation. You don't have a say. If I'm reaching into my pocket, you don't have a say. Everybody got that? Well, you know you need to give to Jesus. Jesus doesn't need money. Let me repeat that. Jesus does not need money. And you do not give, get anything back from giving away your money. Point blank. And it says in the New Testament, the church is in you. You go to meet up to be encouraged that's it you don't go up to give money away we're gonna take we're gonna take the uh second offering we're gonna take the 15th offering offering we're gonna uh, and, I, I'm, and i'm driving around with her and i'm looking at these churches sitting just big and pretty houses shuttered closed down and boarded up Pe poor people uh, living on the street i've never seen this before in my life and she said you never saw a homeless person no i have not seen a homeless person not up up close 
I've seen them on the news. I've never seen them up close. She's just so country. <laughs> she is such a a peasant, and she just wallows in it. They, they, they just, they said, I said, and I'm thinking to myself, how are these people laying in the Las Vegas heat two feet from 500 churches? What, what is going on? This is not of God. This has nothing to do with the, Jesus isn't in these people whatsoever. They take hypocrite to a whole new level. I mean, church after church after church after church after church. And just the poorest place. And then I said, uh, is this a McDonald's uh, restaurant? And they said, no, that's, that's the headquarters of McDonald's. I said, oh, I get it. They come to the cheapest uh, commercial property they could find. And they're taking up the spots. And this made me so mad. And they're taking up the spots of what could be black businesses. And look right across the street. We have a whole bunch of black neighborhoods. Said, well, they can buy it too. That's up. They can buy it too. Just freaking slavery. Just beating. Just oozing out of her pores. They can buy it too. White people can. All you have to do is spend money. White people. I said listen to me. Listen to me. They have, We live in a town where there are designated white areas. And you cannot open up a store if you're anything other than white we have designated hispanic areas you cannot oh we have asian areas we and, and they have nothing but asian stores nothing but hispanic stores nothing but white stores uh, so what what is this uh, yeah, yes, uh, yeah, when it comes to black people you're all like well all they do is have to spend money uh, ain't nothing stopping black people how are you in the government and you you're not understanding that the black people are stopped from building in their own community that they have taken up all of the prime commercial spots on the corners you have the city and the state taking up commercial spots for their stupid uh courts in the black community why for what i mean sitting right on the biggest street in the black community, the biggest, the biggest corners, the biggest cross streets, and it's a city building. And I, and I can't tell, but, and it's like I'm speaking a foreign language. I can't tell them that is a prime, primo spot, commercial spot right there. You can make a billion dollars sitting, put, putting your business on that corner. And they're just raping the black community with churches on the corner. I mean, just, huh what and the mexicans come in and own grocery stores and everybody in there shopping is black everybody and the stuff is just as high as if you were in the carlton ritz or something i was like what is going on nine dollars for a bottle of tea or what what are you are you crazy what is well, look you guy got a coupon you know, what, what is going on with you i don't, I don't understand Maybe I shouldn't have talked to my family because I just I've just been disgusted for the entire two weeks. I've been disgusted with my contractors too. I say, uh, do you know a black electrician? Well, I know a white boy. He's all right. I, I, that wasn't the question. Do you know a black one? Well, the black one I know is on drugs. Okay, okay, whatever. I'll find one. It doesn't matter. You know what? It if I'm paying the dollars, it matters. This is what you have, this is why black people don't take, you have no backbone. Backbone is just ripped completely out. If you are paying your dollars, you have the say. Nobody else has the say. Well, well we're going to hire a bunch of Mexicans. You are not going to hire a bunch of Mexicans not on my property. I'm not Mexican. The Mexicans can hire the Mexicans. I don't know. I don't see what difference it makes. It makes a difference because it's coming out of my pocket. It makes a difference because it's coming out of my pocket. And that's why you're in this situation that you're in. You're giving your money away to everybody else but black people. Here you have an opportunity to actually get give $30,000, $50,000 to black people. You're trying to hire some Mexicans and white people. What the hell is your problem? Well, they got to work too. No, black people are out of work. Do you not understand it? This is why the guy's on drugs. This is why this guy's an alcoholic. And they ripped out all the all, all the copper and all the wires out of the house. I said, why would they do that? Oh well, they probably they probably uh, didn't have work, so this is. And you're trying to get me to hire some Mexicans? Well, those Mexicans work really hard. Black people work really hard. There's nobody on the face of the planet who has worked harder than black people, bar none, hands down, not even a competition. I'm disgusted with black people. I'm just disgusted with the low brow, no backbone. And when you have an opportunity to make fifty thousand dollars. 
You go and try and hire somebody, and not on my watch, not not coming out of my pocket, no. They have to be black, blue black, not even light skin, blue black. <laughs> I like my air conditioner guy. He is friggin' looks like this towel that is sitting in front of me that is jet black. Well, I can do, uh, are, they, are they black? Well, I don't know, I don't, I, I don't think that matters. It matters, it matters. I'm gonna pay out $50,000. We have black people who are unemployed to the degree that it's at like 30, 40, 50, 60 percent unemployed. Why in the hell would I employ anybody else? What? That doesn't make logical sense. And if I am going to pay you four times, imagine how much simpler that person's life is going to be if they have no job whatsoever and then all of a sudden, two weeks they get money, 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 to the tune of $50,000 divided up by the people. That's going to alleviate so much stress, so much heartache, and it's my money. And these black people are trying to give it away to everybody else, everybody else. You let, me, you let me hire a Mexican foreman. He will find every possible Mexican he can. And if push comes to shove, he'll hire a Panamanian. Not a Cuban, a Panamanian. <laughs> El Salvadoran or whatever. You let me hire an Asian foreman. He will find every Asian that can lift a hammer. Black people will hire everybody else. Just as stupid as a day is long. Just dumb. I am disgusted. This is the reality of what we have to deal with. I have to get it through these people's thick heads. If if I'm doing the hiring, I'm doing the hiring. This is what I'm gonna do. Don't, don't let him introduce me to the, the drunk guy. I'll be all like, look, okay, look, here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna go off of the booze for a week, okay? And this is how much we're, I'm gonna pay you, all right? You're gonna you're gonna take care of all of your bills. And here's what I'm gonna have help you invest this. And this money is gonna go towards you buying your own house or you paying off of the, your, your stuff. And then you're gonna be sitting pretty for a good five years uh, just off of this money that I'm about to give you. And the, the, we're gonna we're gonna work this out you won't need to drink you won't need to escape or what your problems because you won't have any and if you keep messing around and do a good job maybe i'll buy like five more houses and you will be a permanent fixture on my roster of people to call everybody else suggests everybody italians suggest italians mormons suggest i mean they just everybody else comes and takes over but but black people know they're they give their money away i'm disgusted you need to have my attitude if i'm reaching in my pocket I get the say so, you don't get any say so, none. Thank you for watching the Shikama Life Show. And uh, 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 slash that like button. Thank you.